So I just want to go through some tips on looking after a garden pond. Um, now the first tip if you are looking after a garden pond is it's really good if you can arrange a raised lip around the outside of your pond because that really helps to stop water runoff and leaves being blown into the pond and so forth. Just allows you to help keep it clean. Um, in general, you don't want to feed your pond too much depending on the amount of stock you've got. If you um, have got a normal garden pond with minimal amount of filtration, make sure you've got a minimal amount of fish and make sure you're only feeding high quality foods like New Life Spectrum. And, I, and in most circumstances, I'll only feed the fish in a garden pond about once a week because there should be plenty of wrigglers and natural food for them to eat. And the main reason why you are feeding them is to make sure that they um, respond to you because they're, that you'll find that they're... Um, they're a lot more responsive to you if you're actually feeding them and you get a better relationship with your fish. If you are going to keep a lot of fish, um, therefore you've got very good filtration and aeration, then the fish will need to be fed more often, so several times a week. And you always want to be looking at the belly of the fish. So if you see the belly getting thin, you need to be feeding them more often. If you see the belly getting fat, then you need to be feeding them less often. So feeding is... And, and you feed a lot less in winter, you feed almost nothing in winter, and you'll feed a normal routine of feeding in summer. Um, the other thing I would do is just have a fine net, and, I, and whenever I'm out in my garden, I just grab the fine net and see if I can pull any leaves out, because any rotting leaves in the pond is obviously going to deteriorate the water quality. Um, I would also like to do water changes, say at least every few months, and the way I'll do that is I'll stir the bottom up, usually using the fine net, and then I will remove a percentage of the water, generally 10 or 20% of the water, Once, and then I'll just throw that on the plants because it's usually fairly rich in nutrients. If, if it is a situation where you can siphon the water out of the pond, then you can suck all of the crap out of the bottom of the pond. If it is a situation where it needs to be pumped out, there are also various pond cleaners available that can actually suck all of the crap out of the bottom of the pond. And there's also products such as Aquarium Detox, which will also help to break down that sediment that forms in the bottom of the pond. So then when you've taken the water out, you then need to replace it. So if you just got yourself a rubbish bin, which is um, a garbage bin, which is dedicated to the aquarium, the pond, you then fill the thing up with water. You add your water AG, your KH powder and your um, salt and then tip it over and just top the water up. If you're going to put the hose in the pond and you're, cha and you're topping up less than 10%, that's okay. But just be aware that if you're putting the hose in the pond and you're doing 25% or more, then the chlorine flush from the hose, regardless of the water age you're adding, may actually um, kill off your bacteria and um, cause you a major problem. So once again, adding salt to the water, about one gram per litre, adding KH powder to the water, um, according to the instructions are quite important. They usually want to try and keep a KH of about 4 dKH. So KH is probably one of the biggest killers of uh, aquarium fish because it's something that people don't think about. I normally want to clean the filters at least every quarter, making sure that when I do clean the filters, I'm cleaning them out um, using water that I've removed from the pond, not using tap water because I don't want any chlorine. Um, also make sure that when you're introducing fish to the pond, introduce them very slowly. So a small amount, then wait a month or two, then a small amount, then wait a month or two. Um, it is better introducing the fish in summer if you can, so they can get used to winter as it comes. And um, make sure you acclimatise the fish for at least half an hour before you put them in. So there's just a whole bunch of tips. Um, in regards to cleaning algae, um, cleaning algae with a brush is, is a pretty common way to do it. So just get in there with like a, a brush. If you are cleaning a water feature, I find if you get a brush with a dustpan, and then well, you can turn off the water feature and you can just sort of flick the algae into the dustpan, it's quite an effective way of doing it. So the fish that you put in a pond tends to be koi if the fish are large, if the pond's large. Otherwise you might go for something like goldfish if it's smaller. Um, the other fish that you can put in there are things like mountain clouds, um, golden madakas, um, sometimes um, people wiggle um, um, paradise fish in there, zebra danios, um, tandanus catfish, um, ze um, um, what else? 
mountain clouds, I think I said that, anyway. So there is a range of fish you can put in, but it's really important that none of the fish fit in the mouth of the biggest fish. And fish like tendanus, catfish, koi and goldfish have a big mouth. So a lot of those other fish I mentioned will also get swallowed. Also rosy barbs are quite popular as well. Um, and they're a bit nippy, so be careful with them. But if your pond's big enough, you get away with a lot, especially if there's a lot of cover for the um, fish to hide in. Anyway, there's a few things to consider. <laughs>